it is truly astonishing to me that we have an insurrectionist on the Supreme Court whose wife literally worked with the people on January 6th to illegally overthrow democracy in this country. And people are mostly just like, man, that's crazy. But what are you going to do? I mean, this is the sad state of affairs in the United States. Even if it's impossible to him impeach him, even if getting him to resign by exerting pressure on him is a near impossibility, are we just not going to try? Are we not going to even hold up this facade as if there is accountability or checks and balances in government anymore? Is it just all, are we just done pretending? Seems like we're just done pretending. Now, um, the plot thickens when it comes to Jenny Thomas, uh, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, because we learned that she put pressure on Arizona lawmakers to get them to send their own rogue electors to the Electoral College in 2020 and just override the will of voters in that state. Yeah, this happened. There's an actual email. You can look at that right here. But let's go to the article for a more comprehensive breakdown. Brett Wilkins of Common Dreams explains, Democracy defenders expressed anger and consternation Friday after the Washington Post revealed that Ginny Thomas, the right-wing activist and wife of Associate U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, pushed Arizona lawmakers to invoke a dubious legal theory advocated by her husband in order to help then-President Donald Trump reverse his 2020 presidential election loss. Emails obtained by the Post show that Ginny Thomas emailed Arizona House Speaker Rusty Bowers and State Representative Shauna Bullock, who advocates empowering legislators to void the will of voters, urging them to disregard President Joe Biden's victory and replace the state's electors with a clean slate. Echoing the big lie that Democrats rigged the 2020 contest, Thomas, who also sent numerous emails to Mark Meadows, Trump's chief of staff, urging him to push to overturn the election, implored the lawmakers to do your constitutional duty by using their power to fight back against fraud. A later audit of Arizona's election that Trump supporters said would prove it was stolen concluded there was no fraud and that Biden actually won the state by more votes than the official count. Thomas told the Arizona lawmakers that the power to choose electors was yours and yours alone, an apparent reference to independent state legislature theory. The Brennan Center for Justice describes ISLT as a baseless concept making the rounds in conservative legal circles that posits congressional elections can only be regulated by a state's lawmakers, not its judicial judiciary or even its constitution. Now, just in case any right-wingers are watching and they want to accuse me or this article of manipulating Ginny Thomas's words, here it is right up on the screen. You can see it straight from the horse's mouth. She was literally pressuring lawmakers to replace their state's electors with rogue electors. Now, there are still people who maintain that it doesn't necessarily matter what Ginny Thomas does because Ginny Thomas isn't on the Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas is. Except, one, that's incredibly naive, and two, Clarence Thomas agrees with his wife, and we know that because he was the one vote on the Supreme Court that said the White House doesn't have to turn over documents related to January 6th. Now, I wonder why he would make this vote. Could it possibly be that he knew what his wife was up to and he agreed with her and he wanted to hide what they were doing behind the scenes, trying to kill democracy? And yet he's going to still be on the Supreme Court. There's really not many calls for him to resign. There's no formal impeachment proceedings underway. He's just he's just going to be on the Supreme Court. And we're just like, oh, OK, I guess that's just the way that it is. Why? Why is it this way? If you can't hold public officials who are openly corrupt, openly plotting to overturn democracy accountable, then none of our institutions matter. And this is why the American people have so little faith in institutions, because elites can basically do anything. I mean, they could, they could literally do anything. Plot to steal an election away, and nothing happens. Nobody gets fired, nobody gets jailed, nobody gets prosecuted. They just do it out in the open, and then... We just move on. We forget about it until a more egregious crime is committed and not prosecuted. And then we we kind of like focus on that one. And I've got to say, this kind of proves why we have to get rid of the Electoral College, because now Republicans go to strategy to steal elections away, quite literally, is to just override the will of voters in their state. So that way, if, you know, their state's results doesn't go the way that they want it, they just send in their own rogue electors to do that. They're already laying the groundwork for this legally to do this in states, right? But the problem is that, you know, Democrats would never seriously consider getting rid of the Electoral College. And honestly, what's sad is that the only way that we could fe uh, feasibly have the situation where the uh, Electoral College is abolished is if a Republican candidate somehow won the popular vote but still lost the Electoral College vote. Like, that's the only way it would get done, because Republicans would actually do something about it, 
Whereas Democrats can get fucked over time and again, and it's just like, man, shucks, we're just going to have to get them next time, folks. Now, I want to get to some reactions regarding this news story about Ginny Thomas. Slate's Mark Joseph Stern responded to the news by saying the conflict of interest between Ginny and Clarence Thomas has never been greater. While Clarence was applying the independent state legislature doctrine from the bench, Ginny was using the exact same theory to try to overturn the 2020 election, just breathtaking corruption. He adds Clarence Thomas's continued service on the Supreme Court is a scandalous and appalling breach of judicial ethics. He is implementing the exact same theories that his wife used to try to steal the 2020 election for Trump. It is sordid, corrupt, and lawless in the extreme. Max Burns argues you can argue a lot of things about 2020, but the fact that a former president, a Supreme Court justice's wife, and other prominent Republicans actively encourage state GOP officials to outright falsify an election should be a 24-7 media story. Yeah, and I agree wholeheartedly with that. You know, people at this point, they'll probably see this story and they'll think, yeah, that's Ginny Thomas. She's bad, right? But force yourself to never become accustomed to this kind of news story. Force yourself to continue to be outraged because this is an outrageous story. It is unacceptable that a wife of the Supreme Court justice is trying to use this weird theory to kill democracy. I mean, that's that's not an actual legal theory. That's just you making the case against democracy and for authoritarianism. So, you know, if people get normalized to this, which, I mean, you know, um, public officials skirting accountability is a common phenomenon in the United States, then, you know, democracy will continue to crumble. And this is just another story where we're going to see the the headlines, we're going to see the email that she sent and acknowledge that it's bad, but we're just going to move on and largely think, man, I wish something could be done. If you are a member of Congress and you see this news and you're outraged, it is your responsibility to raise the salience of this issue to make sure there are impeachment proceedings. There are uh, calls for him to resign because this is not okay. You can't have a member of the highest court in the land advocating against democracy. That's just, it's unacceptable. And not just advocating for it, actually having his wife try to execute the end of democracy in the United States. That's not okay. So everyone needs to, you know, play their part in in power in dc but you know i feel like most of them are just kind of shrugging like all of us because they know nothing will happen well this is how democracy dies then you know when people just give up because the institutions they know that they're, they're not going to be conducive to accountability so everyone just says fuck it collectively and shrugs